Maximalist style is back for fall 2021, and I'm here to help you determine whether you are a maximalist like an Iris Epfel or whether you are more of a minimalist like Jennifer Aniston. Stay tuned. Hi, this is Netta. Welcome to my channel. My whole goal for this channel is to help you build a wardrobe and a style that you love so that you can look and feel beautiful and confident every single day. So Tuesdays around here means it's time for the Ageless Style Show. The Ageless Style Show is my Tuesday format for my YouTube channel and I hope you enjoy it. I start with a couple of segments before I launch in to the main topic of the video. So the first segment today is, I'm going to get started right away, is Buzzworthy. Buzzworthy means that I'm highlighting something that is on my radar that week that I am loving and today I'm excited to share something with you because this is so affordable and it was such a random find a couple of months ago we were in Illinois and I ran out of a couple of my makeup products my go-to makeup products and I had noticed on my YouTube videos that my eyelids are quite oily and um, my mascara was transferring to my eyelids and by the end of shooting if i was shooting a couple videos in a row i would find that in the crease of my eye um, my my makeup was kind of collecting there and i was having a line in the crease of my eye so my makeup was just not staying put all day long even though i was using a face primer all over my face i wasn't using a specific eye primer i was skipping that step so um depending on your needs and you know if you don't have oily eyelids maybe um, an eye makeup primer is not going to be something that you feel like you absolutely need but i did end up buying this elf putty eye primer Let's see if you can see it. Just comes in this little tub, and I have um, this is a just a concealer brush from Bare Essentials that I've had for a really long time. I am have absolutely been loving this. It's five dollars. It's easily available. I got mine at Ulta, but I mean, I'm sure it's available wherever uh, e.l.f. products are sold, which here is in our local drugstores. So easy to find. And it comes in a couple of different shades. I'm just going to tell you what the different shades are. White, it says maximizes vibrancy. Cream intensifies shadow for yellow undertones. Clay creates an even smoky brown base. Sand creates an even tan base for neutral shadows. Rose intensifies shadow for pink undertones and black adds dimension. I don't know what black would look like, but I have the, um, the, the sand color. And what I love about this, it's a really creamy formula. Um, it says it gives you a tint of subtle matte color, 12 hours of smudge proof wear time, delivers a boost of hydration to your eyelids and is infused with scaling, squealing, to balance and moisturize skin. It can be a worn alone or under shadow, grips makeup for smooth application, and it's also vegan and cruelty free like all of their products. So anyway, this is how I apply this product. I add, um, I just add a little bit of it to this brush. Again, it's just a little concealer brush, but you can use whatever, whatever applicator you want. And I just brush it onto my eyelids. And on its own, it just evens the skin tone there and looks makes my eyes look fresher and brighter. But under makeup, it keeps everything just kind of set and in place all day long. So I love it. Great little find, $5. Um, the one thing I will say about this is it's it's thick and it's kind of packed into the jar. So I definitely would recommend applying it with a brush. When I first started applying it with my finger, I was like, well, it doesn't seem like anything wants to come off um, on my finger, but just work the brush into it and paint it onto your eyelids. It's easy and fun to apply and it really does keep everything in place. So that's my buzzworthy pick for the week. It's the e.l.f. Putty Eye Primer. Okay, next I'm going to share my makeover, my my before and after of the week. So this makeover is from a beauty named Janet who is in my Ageless Style program. If you want information on how you can get your own transformation through the Ageless Style program, I definitely recommend checking it out in the description box below. It's a, a self guided but also fully supported style program that helps you reach your style goals and uh, you do it in such a kind and supportive community with beautiful women like Janet. She is one of my favorite people um, and I'm so thankful that I've had a chance to get to know her through the program. So Janet started the program kind of in a rut with her style because she'd gone through a lot of major changes including a major house fire where she had lost 
her whole wardrobe. Um, she also moved across the country from New Mexico to Florida and just multiple things happened that really took the focus off of her, her life, her style, herself, um, and she just wasn't really able to, to, to spend the time that she needed to kind of get her, her style back on track. So when she joined the program, um, I was so excited to see her. Um, she joined through one of my challenges. She got involved in one of my challenges. I was thrilled to see her wins in one of, in, in my challenges. Um, and we actually have one going on this week when this video airs. So if you are, are interested in just getting some freestyle support, definitely hop into my private Facebook group. It is it linked in the description box below, but we're going through a challenge this week. And anyway, that's how Janet found us. And um, I just have loved getting to know her. So she started out really kind of just in t-shirts, just in you know, very basic clothes that just really did not express her beauty and her personal style. And as you can tell, she is gorgeous. So this is the after picture. Um, this is a couple of uh, months into the Age of Style program. She's been with us for a little while now. She's been really leaning into her femme fatale personal style. She has this glamorous, beautiful hair, glamorous personal style. And even when she is at home, she just has this striking quality to her. And I've just loved seeing her transform from somebody who wore baggy t-shirts all day long to somebody who really uh, expresses their style through color, through pattern, through detail, through accessories, and really looks and feels beautiful and confident every single day. So that's a goal that I have for each of you and that I, uh, you know, that is my my whole reason for doing this channel. And so I feel like Janet kind of exemplifies that. Plus, she's just a lovely human being. So I hope that you enjoyed today's makeover. It's just kind of more of a, a, tr a transformation of one specific person. One thing I will say that can be a takeaway for you is the importance of leaning into your own color palette. Because Janet, when she when she came to us, was, was all over the, the the map when it comes to color, but she has striking warm coloring. And by really paying attention to her own color palette and working with that color palette and supporting her, her own coloring through her choices and her vibrant color choices, she has really learned to shine through her style. Um, and color has played a, a key role in that. So if, you, if you've never really allowed yourself to fully embrace your own color palette, I suggest you look at these before and afters and see what a huge difference it can make. And if, if just changing your colors, embracing the colors that you know work best for you um, can help you achieve the same result. That's something that I do with every one of the women in the program. We work on developing a color palette for their wardrobes that really fully um, support their personal style and also make them look and feel their best. So that was today's, uh, this, this episode's before and after. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, give a shout out to Janet in the comments and thank her for letting me use her beautiful pictures because like I said, she has been an inspiration to us all. Okay, so the next segment is the reader or the viewer question. I keep saying reader question, but viewer question. It's a question from one of you guys. And this question is um, from, actually I have two women who submitted similar questions. One says, I'm 5'11 plus overweight. I'm a, a type three. In other words, she's a style doll blue body type, a straighter body type. All I really want is a nice pair of jeans that don't fall down. If they fit in the waist, they are too big in the hips and thighs. That is a common problem for a style doll blue. So she has more shape in the middle part of her body, her waistline, than she does in her hips and thighs. Um, and that's from Ina. Um, and then I also got another question from um, a, a, a viewer who said that she wants pants that fit properly. Her pants are too baggy over the thighs. So one one of the women has pants that are too baggy over hips and thighs. The other one has 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 pants that are too baggy over the thighs. So I have a couple of suggestions in general. First, my first suggestion would be to watch the Age of Style show, and I'll link it below a couple of episodes ago where I talked about pants that are guaranteed to fit. Yes, there are brands that are guaranteeing their pants to fit, and they have custom and semi-custom options that can be a, a godsend for anyone who's hard to fit, which is most of us when it comes to pants. So that would be my first suggestion. My second suggestion is to find your trouble spot. What is the area that is hardest for you to fit? If you're a tall woman like Ina, then length is going to be your, your biggest challenge, right? And so 
going to brands like Amali Tali um, or ASOS Tall and looking for pants there is going to be really important. Um, and going on a site like Search by Inseam, which I talk about all the time, where you find out what your inseam length is by measuring your own inseam, and then you enter in that number in their in their system, and it will spit back uh, brands that have pants that are sized for your inseam. So that's critical if you're tall or if you're petite. Um, you also need to fit the widest or fullest part of your body first. So after you get the length thing down, if you're outside of a standard length, you want to find out what the widest and fullest part of your body is. You have to fit that part of your body. There's no option of your clothes not going over your body, so you've got to fit the part of your body that's widest or fullest. Uh, that's that's I think that's obvious, but a lot of times we're trying to stay within a size or a size range rather than, than paying attention to how smoothly and evenly is it going to fit over the widest part of our body. You don't want the, the pants to be stretched so that they're, they're not flattering or they look like they're too small, right? So the second step is to alter. Unfortunately, if you're not going to go the custom pants option, many of us have to fit our, our more challenging spots and then alter the rest to fit. So for example, if you are just a, a little bit too too short for a regular length but you're close to a regular length like I am you may need to fit you know the, the, the pants to the rest of your body and then have the hem taken in if you find that you, you wear a different size at the waist than you do at the hips and thighs which is very common either your hips and thighs are smaller or larger than your waist then you're going to have to have the, the loose area altered a little bit to fit so unfortunately um, for many of us if we want a great fit in pants we're going to need to invest in a little altering if you can sew yourself even better uh, more power to you i wish i could but altering is is kind of essential for a lot of women unless you're wearing really stretchy pants um altering is just going to be something that that i think we all just kind of need to embrace and accept as part of life if we want our clothes to fit properly um the, then the third option i said is you know consider brands that are um size for your body. I've already mentioned Amali Tali, ASOS has ASOS Tall, ASOS Curve. If you've got um, a, quite a big gap between your hips and your waist, if your waist is considerably smaller than your hips and you find that you always get that waist gap, brands like Good American can help with that. That's their whole, that's their whole thing is pants that kind of fit at the waist and go over the curves at the hips and, and bum. Um, Wit and Wisdom, cut from the cloth. There are a lot of brands that have technology and have special sizing and special fits that can fit um, a variety of, of uh, body types. So, you know, traditionally, jeans were designed to fit a straighter body type. Um, they were originally men's clothing, right? Men are straighter um, through the hips and waist. So um, it's, no, it's no accident that jeans are not really designed to fit a curvy woman's body. But there are brands that have changed that and have come a long way in terms of that fit from that, you know, for those of you who have that waist to hip ratio, that's quite... Um, different okay find out where you are um you know where you are struggling when it comes to pant fitting and pant sizing uh, definitely watch my video consider custom consider alterations and then find a brand that is designed for your body type i've got a lot of them in the description box below i've got my perfect pants um catalog so definitely check out those options okay Finally, we are going to go into today's main topic, and I'm so excited to talk about this because this is such a fun topic. I really want you to, to start thinking about your personal style and where you fall on the continuum of minimal to maximal. So why are we covering minimal to maximal? Because a lot of times women will post a picture in my VIP group and say, am I wearing enough accessories? What am I wearing? Um, what am I missing from this outfit? Am I wearing too many accessories, too few accessories? Um, how, do, how do I know when I have hit that perfect balance of an accessorized outfit? And I will tell you, there is no way of knowing but leaning into your own personal style because there's not really a right or wrong way, right? Sometimes we hear that 
too many accessories can be frumpy. Sometimes we hear that too few accessories can be frumpy. And those are both, those both can be true. Um, but the, the key is to find out what works for you and what works for your personal style. Um, too many accessories that are amazingly done, like Iris Apfel, can be so chic and a few well-chosen accessories can also be so chic. So how do you know where you fall on the spectrum and how um, that translates to how you get dressed every day? Like, why does this matter? Why does it matter if you put yourself in a specific category? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go over that and kind of help you identify how you might want to start paying attention to how you put together outfits so that it really expresses your personal style. Okay. So how do you know if you're a minimalist? If you've admired Jennifer Aniston's style, if she's your style muse, you may be a minimalist. Jennifer Aniston has classically minimalist style. Her outfits are neutral. Her outfits are understated. Her accessories are, are simple, are clean, are minimal, right? The difference between boring and minimal is in the details. Why? doesn't every basic outfit look like Jennifer Aniston's basic outfits? Like, why can't you just throw on a neutral top and neutral pants and very simple accessories and have them look chic and elevated? Why is that something that can be a challenge for some of us and other people seem to get that really right? The, the, the details are real, really what makes the difference. And details are even more important in minimal style than they are in any other style type. And that's because you don't have that much to hide behind. You don't have color or pattern or lots of frou-frou in minimal style. So everything that you're wearing is that much more important and that much more significant. So what, what are the details that we're looking for when it comes to uh, minimal style? Um, like I said, the simpler the outfit, the more important those details are. So successful minimal style, you have to have three things that, and you've got to nail these three things because again, you know, there's no distractions. You're wearing something really simple, really streamlined, really clean, really basic for lack of a better word, but minimal style does not look basic. It looks chic. It looks elevated. So the very first thing you need to look at is fabulous fit. So I don't know if you've heard this in the past, but Jennifer Aniston gets her t-shirts tailored at least that's 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 what i've heard she gets everything altered to fit her body so you know when you see her from the side and there is no like billowing fabric underneath the bust of a of a of a t-shirt it's because it's been altered to fit her body everything fits her beautifully and even though it looks like she just threw her outfit on together or threw it on she did not like every single piece of every single outfit is intentional because she starts with high quality basics that represent her personal style that have a little bit of an element to them even if you can't see them on camera but that elevates them there's something a little bit special about every one of her pieces as simple as they are and they fit her perfectly and you know obviously she's beautiful she's slim all of those other things but she looks more beautiful she looks more slim she looks more elevated because every one of her style pieces absolutely i mean her clothing pieces absolutely fits her flawlessly okay the next thing that you want to pay attention to if you are interested in exploring minimal style is quality so like i said her pieces are not basic in the sense that they're boring or they're shapeless or they're nondescript they actually are well made they're well executed the fabrics are beautiful they drape beautifully they fit beautifully again and the quality is exceptional so she chooses really good quality in her basic pieces now good quality doesn't mean that you have to spend a ton of money but it means that you need to recognize the signs of quality in the clothing that you buy because you can get good quality pieces almost anywhere i've seen bad quality at a high price point i've seen good quality at a low price point so you really just want to know what you're looking for comment below if you want to see a video on how to recognize good quality when you're shopping so she's picking pieces that that have this elegance about them because the quality is so good another thing that she um, is known for is um, well with minimal style in general and not just Jennifer Aniston but minimal style um, it's the elements that tie an outfit together interesting but subtle details that can really make an outfit chic so 
yes, maybe someone is wearing something really basic, like a basic neutral top and basic neutral pants, but then the way that they tie it together with accessories, the choice of accessories, you'll notice it's not just any pair of shoes, it's the perfect pair of neutral shoes. It's not just any bag, it's a great bag. It's not just any pair of earrings or any accessory. Those accessories and those individual pieces are perfectly chosen. Like you can see, you know, someone in a tee and jeans, but the jeans are so cool. And then the shoes they're wearing it with are so cool. And the tee is so cool. And the accessories, things. you get the idea. Every single one of those pieces, including the accessories, are elevated. So they're not just wearing any jeans, they're wearing jeans that fit them beautifully, that are contemporary, that are cool, that have a uniqueness and a quality to them that takes them from being everyday and boring to being elegant, elevated, and inspirational. So that's why we get inspired by minimal looks, because we are like, wait, they're just wearing something so basic. Why does that look so cool? Because every single one of the pieces there was some thought put into it. They were chosen carefully. Um, they were chosen for their great fit, their great quality, and maybe an interesting element that made it a little bit more unique and a little bit less um, everyday. Okay, brands to pay attention to if you are interested in, in exploring minimal style further. Um, Vince is a kind of a higher end contemporary brand um, that has beautiful, timeless, minimal design. Um, at the other, more the other end of the price point um, is Cause. Cause is by the same brand uh, or the same maker as H&M. Um, it's COS. They have minimal kind of kind of uh, tend to be boxy some of their designs so you really do have to be careful with cause but it's definitely a very minimal um, aesthetic and very minimal style so even if you're just looking for inspiration the price point is also pretty good at cause but again sh where, no matter where you're shopping you've got to you've got to shop carefully and, and find pieces that are really going to be flattering to your body. Um, Theory is another great standby brand for great classic pieces that have a minimal um, style sensibility to them. They're streamlined, they're chic, and they're, they, they're really known for their amazing fit. Another brand, if you're looking to go designer, designer is Armani. Armani, if you, you know, even if you're just looking for inspiration, has an amazing kind of minimal classic um, style that a lot of women love and aspire to. So just a little style inspiration for you. If you are leaning towards minimal style and you want to explore that further. I also have a catalog in the description box with uh, lots of personal style um, categories and brands that you can check out for inspiration. Really, what most of us just need is just a couple of go-to brands that really represent our personal style. It makes shopping so much easier, especially once you get your sizes down in those brands. It's effortless. You update your wardrobe a couple of times a year with a couple of pieces from that brand and you're set, right? Okay, so just say you're like, oh, I'm not a minimalist. I wanna go all out. And again, there's nothing boring about minimalism done right, but maximalists want all the color. They want all the color. They want all the details. They want all the pattern and the fun and the, the, the whimsy that can come with style. Now, many of you are gonna fall in the middle, somewhere in the middle. And so I kind of want you to see what the two, not extremes, but the two opposites sort of look like and see where you fall on this continuum, on this spectrum of um, minimal to maximal. Okay, so maximal style. Your style muse might be Iris Epfel. I just mentioned her a little while ago. She is a maximal maximalist. I mean, she just personifies maximalism. And her personal style is obviously it's very unique to her. It's quirky, it's whimsical, it's very colorful. She is not afraid of piling on um, the pieces, but she has such an art and a and um and a technique to the way that she does it that she always looks amazing always looks amazing this is kind of a hard personal style to pull off right like going that all in on maximal style can be a little bit of a challenge can be a little intimidating but she offers some great inspiration and you can kind of follow her lead she just makes it look effortless okay so what what is maximal style all about it means that more is more it's the opposite of minimal. More is more. 
Mixing and matching prints, oversized statement clothes and accessories, um, textures, layers, piling on pieces to add more interest, more dimension to an outfit that's all part of maximal style. Um, okay, so what if you're interested in exploring maximal style and you're like, you know, I've seen some of those looks out there and I'm really intrigued. Like, how do, how do I do this? How do I pull this off? So the first suggestion I would say is to look for what your statement pieces are going to be. For many women, if you've already got basic essential pieces, and you should if you have my Fashion Essentials Over 40 Wardrobe Guide, then you might want to start exploring your maximal style and see how much you want to lean into this with statement pieces, singular pieces that you can add to an outfit that can really make a statement and bring that maximal style into an otherwise everyday outfit. So vintage stores, um, costumes, not costume, costume, but like vintage stores and thrift stores, stores that sell like one-off items. You can find really cool statement pieces at stores like that. So we're looking for statement accessories that can really bring interest to a, an ordinary outfit. But one of the most um, impactful in your wardrobe statement pieces can be a coat or a jacket of some sort. If you can find a cool vintage coat, vintage jacket, um, thrift store, find that can be worn with everything that you've got that's kind of already a little bit simple and bring that maximal style into your everyday outfits, that's a great find. Um, so make sure they really represent your personal style and they're in colors that you love and colors that flatter you. Um, they, these totally will give your, your wardrobe just that dose of maximal style, especially while you're exploring the style personality. Accessories are where it's at. Find a really cool, fun pair of shoes, a great bag, something that you can wear regularly that you can incorporate into your other outfits that can really take it to the next level. Like I said, jacket accessories, that's, that's the easiest way to start introducing maximal style into your wardrobe. The next thing I would say is to go for brands that have matched sets that are maximalist um, friendly. So if you're worried about mixing and matching yourself and putting together outfits like that yourself, there are a lot of brands that do that for you. Um, you can find some of them on Anthropology. I've mentioned in the past that some of my personal favorites are Farm Rio, De Seguel, um, and I have several that are, are linked in the catalog below that will kind of help you um, if you look in my personal style brands catalog in the whimsical category. That's kind of the category that I have for sort of a creative maximalist style. You'll find some brands that really do this very, very well. One of my favorites is La Double J. Um, it's called La Double J. It's a brand out of Italy. They have incredible patterns. It's a higher end brand, but it can really give you, if, if that's out of your price point, it can really give you inspiration on how to combine prints and patterns. So look for prints and patterns that come ready to go matched together by the designer. If you're, if you're trying to dip a toe in this trend or this, um, this personal style um, and are not sure where to start. So a statement making match set already paired by designer just makes it easy, right? Okay, um, if you wanna combine patterns and prints yourself and you wanna take a stab at this, I'm actually gonna do a whole separate video on this. Let me know if that's something you'd be interested in, how to combine prints, how to match prints. Um, the easiest tip I can give you is that you want the colors in a print, you want a color to be the same in the top and bottom, um, but the prints size to be different. So for example, maybe you've got one unifying color, but then the top has a really small print and the bottom has a really oversized print. So the print size needs to be different, but a color needs to connect both of those two pieces. Um, the key to mixing prints successfully is to really have that contrast in the size of the prints and then have that unifying color. Um, so experiment with mixing and matching prints. The good thing about outfits is that if you don't like the effect, you can change, right? It's so easy. But take a pic, uh, put an outfit together, try that print matching, print mixing. If that's something that you love and you've admired and you just haven't tried, try it, take a picture. Maybe wear it around the house and see if you can increase your comfort level with it and, and see how you can tweak it to make it more and more your personal style. So brands that have maximalist style, I've already mentioned a couple, La Double J, Road Resort. Road Resort has just amazing, signature prints that are just gorgeous. Um, Versace at the higher end. And of course, Farm Rio, De Seguel, I mentioned them a lot. Definitely look on um, uh, 
stores like anthropology for a little bit of inspiration when it comes to maximalist style. Not everything on anthropology is maximalist, but you will see some of these brands represented there. So I hope that was helpful. I just wanted you to really kind of think about these, um, these polar opposite kind of personal styles because they are both playing a major role in what we're gonna see on the runway for, and what we're gonna see in stores for fall 2021. So a lot, the, the return of maximalist style is, it's, it's here. So you wanna ask yourself, do I even wanna go there? Is that even me? Is that something I even wanna attempt? Or am I a, a, a minimalist through and through and I wanna lean into that aesthetic? Neither is wrong, neither is out of style. What you wanna do is you want to, to discover what really feels like you and um, use these guidelines to help you start working your wardrobe and working your personal style in that direction. So let me know what you thought of this. If you'd like more videos on personal style, if you want me to explore more personal style types in depth, happy to do that in this video. I love you guys. It means so much to me to have you um, tune in and comment. Um, if you want the e.l.f. Putty Eye Primer, definitely comment in the description box. I'm doing a giveaway of that eye primer. Um, I will send it off to you and um, you know in record time. So definitely comment. Let me know what you thought of this video. Let me know if you'd like to see another video on personal style if you'd like to see um, a video on print matching, any of the other topics I mentioned today, I get my best ideas from you guys. Um, thanks. Don't forget to hit the like button, the subscribe button. It's free to subscribe and you won't miss any of my videos. I upload new videos every Tuesday and every Friday. If you hit the notification bell, you'll find out as soon as a new video is uploaded. And um, of course, don't forget to comment for your free e.l.f. putty eye primer. Love you guys and I'll see you in the next one.